So this here is a follow-up video from the last video where I talked about Jesus' glorious body, right? Now, in this video, I want to talk about our glorious body. But the question is, will you get one? Now, follow me in the scriptures because you know I love to go there. And let's start at John chapter 6. I want to say, I want to um, point out something here. How can you get this glorious body? Now, let me start reading at verse 35. It says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Pay attention, people. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which had sent me, that of all which he had given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believe on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So the thing is, we want to be raised up as the la at the last day. But how will you be raised up? Well, you must believe in this same Jesus right here that God sent to be Savior. So that's the first thing you must do is you got to believe on him. And, that when, and when you do that, Jesus won't lose none he, of, of any that came to him. He tells you right here in the scripture that he won't lose none that the Father gave him. Now... I want to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to talk about something here. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to read verse 1 through 8. But this time, I want to read it in the NLT version. So I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 through 8, because it's something I want to show you. Now listen to this. It's talking about new bodies. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us, by God himself and not by human hands. That means humans won't have nothing to do with it. No more will of man. No more man and woman having sexual relations to make us. It says we grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies we will not be spirits without bodies. Now, in the last video, I told you, you will have a body. Just like Jesus' glorious body, he had a body that was flesh and bones. You will have a body. And it's not going to be a spirit without a body. It says, while we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that cloth us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared for us this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. So God then guaranteed us by his Holy Spirit that he prepared for us this heavenly body. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. So as long as we in this earthly body, we're not at home with the Lord. 
He says, for we live by believing. So we believe and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies. For then we will be home with the Lord. So we'll be home with the Lord when we put off this earthly body and we put on that new body. Then we know we are home with the Lord. Now, was it always God's plan for us to have a new body? I want to show you that in Romans 8. Listen to this. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So yes, it was always God's plan that we humans will be conformed to the image of his son. That's clear right there in the scriptures because he foreknew us and he also predestinated. I mean, God already purposed within himself. He wanted us to be conformed to the image of his son. So now, 1 John chapter 3 tells us that we're going to be like Christ when he come back. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says this, Be loved. Now are we the sons of God, and it do not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appear, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So yes, when Jesus comes back, yes, we are going to be like him as he is. And it's confirmed also in Philippians chapter 3. Now, Philippians chapter 3 lets us know that we are going to be changed. And I read this in the last video, but I'm going to read it one more time here. It says, For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. So yes, we're going to see him as he is, and he's going to change us, and we are going to be like him. And we all know that the scripture says he was flesh and bone, he could eat, he's going to be able to drink as well. So yes, we are going to have that Christ-like body. Now I want to go to Matthew 26. I want to show you what the scripture says here. Matthew chapter 26. This is what it says. And I want to go over to uh, verse 27. Let's see what the scripture says. Let's see what Jesus said. Uh, And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the new cup, New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine. I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So yes, in the Father's kingdom, we are going to supper with the Lord. We're going to have a drink. We are going to have a drink with the Lord in that new glorious body we're going to have a drink with the Lord we're going to drink the fruit of the vine with the Lord in that spiritual body and, and um, also I want to point out something that Job said something Job said now this is Job a prophet man of God Let's see what he said before we even knew we was going to come to be in existence. He says this in verse 25, Job 19, verse 25 and 26 says this, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. He's talking about the end times. He's prophesying. He's going to stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though my sin, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. So Job already know that this body, worms, are gonna destroy. They're gonna eat at this body. This body gonna turn back to dust. All right. 
And he says, but he says that in my flesh shall I see God. So if this body dies and the skin worm's going to eat it and it go back to dust, as it says in the scriptures, I believe in the Ecclesiastics, how are we going to see him in our flesh? That's because we're going to get that glorified body, that heavenly body that 1 Corinthians 15 talks about, which is the same body that Jesus had. It's sown in corruption, and it is raised in, no, it's sown in corruption, raised in incorruption. It goes from earthly to heavenly, from earthly, you know, natural to spiritual. So, yeah, in your flesh, you're going to see the Lord. And yes, make sure you prioritize yourself to make sure you align your life according to the will of God. That way you may get that glorious body. So repent, turn from your sins, turn from all that stuff, and let's do right by the Lord so we can get that glorious body.